Welcome one and welcome all, baby, to the People's Channel, Orchids for Dummies. Now, this is Foul Pal Drill, and guess what, honey boo boo kitty? In today's video, I just want to share with you a few care tips on how to maintain your beautiful new blooms that you got from Valentine's Day that your boot thing gave you. I just want to help you maintain them. So you got to stay tuned. So welcome on back, baby, to a no judgment zone. Okay, it's a no judgment zone. So I wanted to share with you this beautiful phalaenopsis right here. Okay, that I named Randy after Fal Pal Randy at Skinny Boy Farms. Okay, gardening with um, Skinny Boy Randy. We both purchased our first orchid of the year, his first orchid in general. We purchased it this year. And so it is now February the 12th. Okay, February the 12th. So, anytime you have a new grocery store Phalaenopsis orchid in particular, how long do you expect your blooms to last? Well, Fal Pal Randy's blooms have already faded. This right here means that it is spent. Okay, it does not mean the plant is dead. It just means that the time for the flower has now come to an end. It is now time for her to grow new roots and new leaves. Okay? So, this beautiful baby right here came from Virginia. We are here in Alabama, so it's been a little over a month, okay? So, you want your blooms to last anywhere between four to six weeks. Sometimes you can get them to last longer, okay? And sometimes you will not be able to keep them longer. But you want to make sure that when you purchase a beautiful new Phalaenopsis orchid, that it will have some buds for you, okay? Right here. So anytime that your Phalaenopsis that you have in bloom, you wanna make sure you have at least seven flowers. Of course, the first thing that get, grabs our attention is these beautiful flowers. Yes, it is. But make sure that it has these right here, which are buds, okay? Make sure you have some that when you take home, you will have more time with the flowers, okay? That's what you want. Now, you see how juicy these babies look? I'm gonna show you a flower or some buds that is what we call bud blast, meaning that the flower will not open, okay? So this is my second Phalaenopsis of the year, named after Fal Pal Crystal. She purchased it for me for my birthday. And she came from Texas. Okay, so all the way from Texas to Alabama. So far, the buds are still looking good. That's what we want. That's what we want. But at for as even with these buds, this is still going to be a delicate time. Okay, a nerve-wracking time. Because living in an apartment... A small indoor grow space, okay? Anytime somebody open up a door or a closet, that cold air, it can cause bud blast. Let me show you what bud blast is, Stacey. Mm -hmm. Welcome on back. Welcome on back. Now, the difference between spent, remember I told you that other bloom was spent? Okay, it died naturally. Now, this is bud blast. You see how wrinkled it is? It is not going to open at all. It is not going to open. And eventually, they will drop off like that. Now, sometimes, even like I said, even experienced growers like myself, when you are growing in an indoor environment, it's a vent right above this stand. It's so many elements in a home. Dry air, okay? Okay. No humidity. It's so many factors that will cause this. So it's okay. This baby right here, I don't think she is going to open up either. Because she's been like that for two days. 
This baby never even bloomed. I don't even know what happened. I don't even know what happens. Okay, so instead of using that cup, what I do is pour about this much water where my thumb is. I pour about that much of rain water in there, okay? And I just sit the whole cup that is potted in inside of here. And I let it soak for 10 minutes. Take it out, let it dry off on a paper towel for 10 minutes, and then I put it right back here, okay? And I'm going to leave it here. Once you start to see another another bloom open up, that's going to be a good indication that the orchid is like, okay, I understand. I'm trying to get it, okay? Give me time. Don't get to putting all that fertilizer in me. Don't get to um, spraying my roots and, I mean, spraying my leaves and stuff. I don't know you like that. I don't know you like that. Come on back, baby. Welcome on back. Welcome on back. Like this video. Do that for me. So these beautiful babies, of course, are mine. So they are okay. I know that they will not blast or fade because they are already acclimated. Meaning they are comfortable, they are used to me, and they know I am not going to do anything too drastic. Like I said, you will still experience some type of, of butt blast throughout your growing experience no matter what. Okay, especially when you are growing indoors. Now, if you get you a greenhouse and you get you a grow room or you get to moving in Florida and putting them on the trees, then things become a lot simpler for you. But growing indoors, honey, girl, we are going to hang on in there. We're not going to give up. We're not going to move our orchid from one window to the next window. We're going to leave them alone and let them be. Acclimate. Okay, that is what we want our orchids to do. Acclimate. This darling right here is my baby. Okay, this is my baby. And as you can see, she has over seven buds. She has eight. But that's a whole different video, okay? The first thing that you want to do is find a comfortable place for your Phalaenopsis orchid. I have so many people saying, Darrell, what's going on with my orchid? What, what, what to do? I don't know what to do. The first thing that you want to do is get a nice place to put it. I know they come in these beautiful pots and we want to be able to see the blooms. We want to use it as decoration. We want to show everyone. We want to take pictures and touch it and smell it and do all of those things. But in order for your blooms to last like my orchid from Virginia, find a spot to put it and leave it alone. Okay, now depending on the type of media, this is bark. So it's gonna dry out faster than the media over there, which is compacted sphagnum moss. I will show it to you in a moment. Now you see this little cup right here. This is what I'm telling you. Okay, this is what is leading the girls astray. So I will show you real quickly how I, okay, Fab Pow Drill, water my orchids in bloom. Okay, when it comes to fertilizing them, I will leave a video link above. Make sure to like this video, help me out. Each one, teach one, help me out. So this baby has beautiful roots, okay? I just watered her. So the roots are green. They're healthy. She is doing good. Since I watered her, okay, I'm not going to have to water her again for at least a week, maybe a week and a half because it's winter and because she is in bloom. When she's in bloom, she doesn't need all the water that she needs when she's growing new roots and new leaves. So, now, uh, in, in addition, make sure that she's getting adequate light. Now, this little darling over here, which is in um, compacted sphagnum moss, okay? Now, when I first brought her home, she did get some bud blast, okay? She had about three blooms to fall, but that is miraculous because, like I said, here we are six weeks later, and she still has some blooms that she's holding on to, 
okay even with her being in compacted sphagnum moss now this right here i only water this about once a month okay so when i brought her home the first thing i did was place her up here under the bright light because i was thinking well she's in bloom she needs bright light that's when the bloom started to fall so the first sign of the blooms falling look to see what you can do differently now, don't go around putting her on the floor and moving her from here and moving her from there. All I did was take her from up here because it seemed as if she was getting too much sun. And I brought her down here, which is also closer to the aquarium, which is going to provide extra humidity because they do need that good old humidity. Now, it's a few things that I did not mention in this video, like I said, at the end what in the world oh my god oh my god oh my god this plant i didn't know oh my god 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 you know i'm new to the house plant game i don't know i don't know i just i'm seeing it for the first time with you girl i'm seeing it for the first time so um even though the plant is not that close to the light um, when they are not in bloom, they are able to, um, you know, they are able to receive that indirect low light, if you will, especially if it's a bigger phalaenopsis. The mini phalaenopsis, no ma'am, they want the window seal. So being able to tell how your orchid is receiving enough light is going to be through the leaves. I will leave a video link, okay, above and at the end of this video. Well, Fab Pals, I hope that you have a happy growing, okay? I will definitely keep you updated on this beautiful baby right here, okay? And in addition to, you know, fertilizing her, you don't have to fertilize her. Make sure you're not using tap water. Some people are able to use tap water. Orchids for Dummies does not use tap water. So I can only tell you what I do and how I do it. So you will have the same success that I have. Well, Fab Pals, I hope that you have a happy growing. Until next time.